What's up YouTube? So this video has been a really long time coming. That is my review of the Impulse RC Reverb. This frame was announced by Final Glide Oz, aka Chad Nowak, and Impulse RC back at the end of 2017. I got mine in January of 2018 from a company called Defiance RC. And um, I've been wanting to do I've been wanting to do a review of this frame for a very long time, but the reason why I didn't do it way back at the beginning of the year is because I didn't know a thing about quadcopter tuning, so I wanted to spend some quality time with this frame and really get an understanding of how to tune a quadcopter and really kind of what this frame brought to the table. So before we jump into this review, I want to say um, for the record that and I'm going to sound like Casey Neistat here a little bit, but whatever. Um, I'm not an employee by Impulse RC. I am not affiliated with them in any way. I just buy their products. This is not a paid advertisement. This is not a paid advertisement or a paid endorsement for this product. In other words, if it sucks, I'll tell you it sucks. and my conclusive thoughts on it. So, starting with specs, this is a Squish X with a mid-mount battery. So what that means is, is that the props on the pitch axis are closer together than the props on the um, roll axis. And with it being a mid-mount style battery, the battery is going to sit a lot closer to the prop line. From motor to motor distance, measured diagonally, it is 225 millimeters. The arms right here are four millimeters thick, and they can be purchased to um, in varying sizes. So, for example, if you want to run um, uh, six-inch props, you can buy um, um, arms that will accommodate six-inch propellers, all the way up to uh, seven inches. So, the weight of this is roughly going to be 120 to 125 grams. The motor mount pattern. So these four screws right here, this the arms will accept a 16 by 16, 16 by 19, or 19 by 19 uh, motor pattern. This frame will fit any standard sized um, camera. And it, so for example, this camera in here, this is the Runcam Swift 2 Rotoriot edition. It can also fit the um, Foxier Predator style cameras and um, it can also fit micro size batteries however in to run a micro size cam on this aircraft you are going to have to run an adapter so let's jump into what i like about the frame and right off the bat the mid mount style battery in the 25 uh, and the 225 millimeter um, stance of the aircraft is going it makes for a very planted feel in the air you've got a low center of gravity and because of just the leverage on the arms just based on how wide they are it's uh it just feels very planted but yet very nimble in the air because of the squish x design layout um the squish x geometry allows for a good feel when doing a lot of snap maneuvers so what i mean by snap is doing the really fast rolls or the really fast um, flips, but it can also be flown in a smooth-esque style fashion if smooth flying is kind of your thing. The um, power distribution board that was designed for this aircraft makes for very clean builds if you're doing um, individual ESCs. So this is it right here. It's kind of hard to see, but it's in there. And one of the things I like about it is, is that the ESCs, um, the pads for them, come out kind of away from the carbon right here so it makes getting in makes um soldering them up really easily and actually so your esc pad you solder up your, your four escs right here then it's kind of hard to see in there you can't really see it but there's a cable that comes out and plugs directly into either a kiss fc which is what i have in here right now or you can re or you can rewire that cable to plug into the uh, four in one esc slot of a flight controller or it comes with um, um, a plug with just bare solder in, so you could wire up, wire them up to you know, you know your your VBAT ground and motor signal wires and whatever. Uh, the receiving antenna mount is simple yet very effective. So this is them 
right here. It's just two antenna tubes that go into this glass nylon piece right there. Can you see that? And then it's held in place by one screw, which is right here, and it creates an interference fit. So no matter how hard you tug, this antenna tube isn't going anywhere. And I have yet to kill um, a receiver antenna with it in here. Um, the VTX mount is very simple yet effective. So what I like about this frame is, is that, um, so it's got this little cutout right here in the carbon, as you can see, and then it's the, the antenna is held in place by two uh, zip ties. And then just for some added rigidity, I have a piece of double-sided sticky tape also down in there just to help it stay in place. And I like, I like the way it looks with the antenna coming out the back, kind of looks like a car spoiler. And the last but not least is that there's a lot of 3D printed aftermarket support. So obviously, um, Brain 3D sells GoPro mounts for both the Hero uh, 5 Session and also the Hero 6 and Hero 7 line of cameras. Um, you can also buy arm guard mounts and, and antenna mounts for the back. Like in case you don't want to mount your VTX antenna this way, they make a 3D printed piece for basically just screwing on an SMA for your 204 gigahertz receiving antennas and if you want to run TBS Crossfire, Brain 3D also makes a um, Crossfire uh, 3D printed mount for the Immortal T antenna. So that's going to do it for the pros. So as far as cons go, the, the biggest con in my opinion about this aircraft is the lack of hardware for mounting a 4-in-1 ESC. If, if you want to mount a 4-in-1 ESC stack, then you're going to need to buy longer hardware for these four inner screws right here. I recommend going for an M3 by 15 millimeter cap head screw and I really wish that those would have been included in the kit. I don't think it, I doubt it would have cost you know Impulse RC anything and I feel like it, it would have it makes the build easier because my fear is is that somebody who's new to the hobby and they really like this frame and they want to build their do their first build with a 4 in 1 ESC the the stock M3 by 12 mil um, screws are not going to be long enough so you can either buy longer hardware or you can buy um, a, an extra set of standoffs I've seen one of these things built with um, basically you've got You've got flight controller, 4-in-1 ESC, they're on standoffs, and then the VTX is actually mounted at the very bottom of the stack, and then you just use the 3D printed aftermarket part back here. So that's my biggest gripe with it, is just the lack of the hardware necessary to mount 4-in-1 ESCs. It's not a deal breaker, but buy some M3 by 15 cap head screws, and you'll be all right. Um, Let's see, the front bottom plate can crack near the standoffs, that's these in a hard crash. I'll show you on another build. So this is my original reverb that I'm actually that I'm actually rebuilding with a 4-in-1 ESC in it. And as you can see, after some pretty hard crashes, look at that. Look, cracked right here. Which, uh, by the way, I forgot to mention this earlier in the specs, but the bottom plate here, it's split. So if you notice, there's two bottom plates. Here, the front is two millimeters thick, the back is 1.5 millimeters thick, and you can remedy this issue by doing one of two things. One is you can re put some CA glue right here on the front, that'll help seal up the carbon and keep it from cracking or help it resist cracking like this, or you can buy a 3D printed bumper mount for it. The arms could be thicker. So, this is the only arm that I've broken so far on this frame, and as you can see, can you see that? See how it's bent slightly up there? Now I think this crash actually came from a um, a hit in um, when I was in Texas. I was trying to do a tribute spin and I crashed into the ground. I think I hit like like a metal grate in the ground. So I can't really fault this thing for cracking there, but. Maybe in the V2, or just come out with, with some five millimeter arms and some longer hardware in the kit to accommodate them. I think that would remedy this issue. And also, it started to delaminate right here. Um,
gripe I have with the Impulse RC Reverb is if you want to use uh, white noise race wire, the standard one will fit, but see how short I've had to cut these motor wires right here? Yeah, like that. I don't like that. And it, it's just because of these extensions from the top plate here that um, they kind of come out over the arm and just the reason why I cut the motor wire so short is because my fear was is that um, I would get a short from the PCB on the carbon. So you can still use race wire. I just recommend going with the uh, shorter mini version of this rather than the full size one. So that's it for uh, the, those are the only cons I have with this aircraft. They're not super big issues, but would really like to see some uh, included hardware for mounting 4 in 1 ESCs. Alright, so let's talk uh, conclusion. Now, in my opinion, when it comes to reviewing anything, there's two sides to purchasing anything in the FPV world. There is the immediate value, which is the kind of just the, the carbon in the, or the parts themselves, but then there's also long term. How, how good is it, you know, six months from now? How good is it in a year from now? How well can it keep up with the rapid change in the whole FPV world that's just moving at hyperspace speed at this day and age? And this thing holds up pretty well. Even though this frame is a year old, is approaching a year old, I don't feel hindered by you know any of its um you know designs i think it flies really really well it suits my flying style really well and i think it suits a very aggressive kind of snappy um flying style that being said though if you want to fly smooth and flowy i think this this frame still lends itself very well it's very adaptable to whatever flying style you may um have the the 4-in-1 ESCs issue with I had with the hardware, it's annoying, but it's tolerable. I think this frame is lends itself very well to building it with individual ESCs. It makes for a very clean build if you do it that way. And overall, I think it's a really fantastic product and worth the price that you pay for this, which is um, $82 for just the frame. The basic PDB is $8. The Impulse OSD PDB for this frame is about runs you about fifty dollars and that has a lot of features packed into it. Chad Nowak with Rotorite did an excellent or did an excellent video on that, so I'll link that down in the video description. So that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. I'm going to leave you with a flight montage of this thing. So uh, look forward to more review videos coming out in the future. I hope this was short, sweet, and to the point for you. That's gonna do it. Thanks for watching. Bye.